back home to Taipei after I spent uh, two weeks in San Francisco where I attended Google I.O. And finally, after I've been waiting for way over a year, I was able to play around with the, in my opinion, most exciting gadget that there is, Google Glass. I wasn't only able to play around with Google Glass, I was also able to interview some of my most favorite tech bloggers out there, uh, from Engadget, from ABC News, Fandroid, Slashgear, and Mr. What Would Google Do himself, Jeff Jarvis, to see and to hear from them about their opinion of Google Glass. Here are the basics of how to use Glass. This is your touchpad. Tap the touchpad to wake up Glass. You should see the display above your line of sight. Adjust it to see everything. I thought it was pretty remarkable at first because I didn't know what to expect when you look through it. Like, what do you see? Is it like text messages? Like, how much can you see? How many lines of text? But it really is like a full screen. It's crazy. Like, when I first took a picture and took a video and you watch it back, the fact that you can just watch a video up in there is just insane. I don't know. I, then I was just mesmerized. Just some of the quick examples I've been using is um, point of, first, first shoot a point of view. Like when you're doing a product review, like I'm doing now, I can record my experience talking about a product. You can't do that. Not at all, because no one can see it. Exactly. Well, we, we can see it, but we don't know what you see right exactly. now. And so when I, the, the one example I, that one the most current example was when I was at Nvidia, mm. and we went out and test shield outdoors. Oh. Um, we controlled shield, um, an AR drone shield, and I'm standing there going like this, recording it while I'm getting a first-person point of view of shield. You can also see AR drone in the distance. Stuff like that you can't use unless you're wearing a big old contour or a GoPro. I like them. I have been using them a lot to take photos and I'm very excited today they announced the Twitter integration which I can't get working right now. So I think I will like it better when that works mm -hmm. and there are more apps out for it. Yeah. And I was, I was hoping at I.O. we would hear more about those apps. We do get Twitter, we do get Facebook today, but I want to do other things with this. I want to like look at you when you're wearing the glasses and then find out things about you. I want to see okay. like, I mean, I know a lot of things about you, but I want to know more. Okay, Glass, record a video. Um, navigation for me is the most intuitive and the most natural thing. Uh, so getting directions somewhere and, and, and you know finding my way from place to place, it's actually really nice on glass. It's actually much nicer than using my phone. You know, I have a mount on my dashboard of my car, so I can put my phone right there. Um, and, and I've always loved Google Navigation, but um, but it's so much nicer to have it just hovering up in your field of view. Um, and, and people ask me, is that distracting? You know, is that uh, something you should be concerned about when driving? But I think it's actually less distracting than having your phone on on your dash. You don't have to look down off the road. You can keep your eyes up and it actually turns itself off between turns so it's actually I think a very nice way to get directions from place to place. Hey there guy. Hey there little guy. Sweet. Remind me to buy tickets for Mozilla Gano tonight. And what this class is really about we don't know yet. I think it's about being able to answer a question immediately. I think it's about being able to get notifications that you want in control. It's about um, also, this ability to record your life. I ran into Trey Ratcliffe, who's a phenomenal online photographer who's made his reputation in our world on Google Plus. And he said that there's an exponential increase in the number of photos he takes. He takes good photos, <laughs> so, so he likes it. So, so it has these multiple um, facilities. And, and I don't know what will take over, what's going to be the main thing about Google Glass, but I think that it'll be nice to be able to just ask a question and get an answer. I had a moment last night where I, I was very glad to have Glass on. I was standing there just listening to Sergey um, talk about Glass with a bunch of folks. Yeah. And it happened to be where I was recording the whole event. Nice. And I was, um, he turned to me and said, Vince, I'm yeah. not Vince, but he, she said, hey, so what do you think? And yeah. I'm like, about what? She's like, yeah. class. Oh, yeah, I, I like it. And then, so <laughs> I had all that capture. And then if I had a camera holding it up yeah. to him, that just seems unnatural. Yeah. Right? And you look like everyone else. But if you got class, you're cool because you're having an engaged discussion with I agree. someone while you're recording with their knowledge. You tell them, hey, I'm recording this conversation. Are you okay with that? And so I had a first point of view of a discussion with Sergey while I was recording it, and when you look at the interview, you 
you're like, wow, I was there with him. I don't think it replaces anything. I think it's more of an accessory to extend or make make the user experience more native almost because mm -hmm. you're looking for it all the time anyways. Yeah. Uh, it may look goofier actually to be yeah. up here like this than it is to be down here like this. I think that has yet to be determined. I mean, in some situations, it's definitely a replacement for the phone, for taking photos and navigation for me. But other times, it's not a replacement at all. My phone can do a lot more. I don't see it being a substitute. It's much more of an augmented um, device for me. Uh, and I, I think it's going to stay that way for, for quite a while anyway, where this is something that you use in addition to your phone, um, where you can you know, do a, a lot of things on this. And I think that you will be able to do a lot more than you can right now. Um, but ultimately, I think that we'll still have our phones with us for quite some time. I mean, I, I can envision a future maybe you know, maybe 10 years down the road where um, you can turn your head and look around and see a, a much larger virtual display than you can see right now. Um, but I think for, you know, at least the next five to eight years, this is still going to be something that's tethered to your phone. Your phone's still going to be a primary thing for you doing your business or doing whatever. Uh, and this will just be a, a way to, um, you know, a way to, to see things without having to dig your phone out. Same thing for like, uh, you know, the rumored iWatch, if indeed that exists. I think it'll be much the same thing. You'll still have your iPhone, you'll still have that, have your music stored on there. Yeah. And the watch will just be a way to, to get to that step more easily. I, can, I can't see this dropping anywhere below five or six hundred bucks when it hits a concern. I mean, come on, no one's really going to pay fifteen hundred dollars for it unless they have vested interests, which people in the tech world definitely do. Um, we'll see how much it ends up costing, though. I think if it gets five hundred dollars or below, I, I'd like to see it on three hundred dollars. And given the hardware here, I think Google can Google can do the. I was just looking at the Epson uh, headset, which actually has two um, much larger displays than glass, uh, and that actually costs four hundred dollars. Um, and the you know the processor in here is an 18 month old chip. Uh, there's not a lot of storage. The battery's tiny. Uh, really, the cost here is coming from the the R and D and you know the kind of the hand built nature of the thing. So once Google starts churning these out in a the factory, I think they can get the cost way down. And, and I hope it'll be on trend. Before we get into the problems with Google Glass, why don't we hear from our sponsors? If you spend any time traveling for business, you'll know how much more you get done when the entire team is working together on a project. If you haven't checked out Go to Meeting with HD faces, you really should. You can share the same screen and launch or join a meeting from anywhere using your computer, smartphone or tablet. You can even present from your iPad and they have an Android application. If you are even remotely paying attention to where I am, you'll know I spend a lot of time traveling. So the ability to effectively share information from anywhere in the world is why I think GoToMeeting is such a dynamic tool for presentations and demos to large groups. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click the Try It Free button and use the promo code GEEKS. Remember, use the promo code GEEKS to support our show. Like I said, I want more apps that are going to be useful in the physical world because I really do have my phone all the time. One other thing about my phone is that I took these to Italy last week and I didn't have connectivity there, so I took a lot of photos with them. Yeah. But going through the photos, I would have rather taken a lot of those photos with my phone or a better camera. The camera's not that great. Now, the implication for us in media is a lot of web pages are destroyed. Yeah. It's another disruption because you want the answer, you don't want to have to go to the web page. This is just text. It's just text. You just want to know what, what time is the flight, um, you know, what's the euro of the day. Uh, those kinds of questions and answers will come in directly uh, it, it, when you need them very conveniently. And this idea of having to go to media and search will still be true for a lot of things, but also not for a lot of things. I've been wearing them where I think they're going to be useful. So here yeah. I wanted to take photos. Mm -hmm. Yesterday I couldn't get connectivity. Connectivity is also a big problem with this. Mm -hmm. You've got to have a phone that can tether. You've got to have an open Wi-Fi network or a network that doesn't have a blocked off website yeah. protecting it. D do people judge you for wearing it? And I was like, well, what do you mean, judge me? And she's like, well, you look like a douchebag. <laughs> it happens with every new technology. We don't know what it is yet. We haven't adjusted our norms and our laws to it yet. But let's get back to the basics here. We're not uncivilized. Right. And, and uh, I don't think you would walk into a men's room or a sauna and start snapping pictures. And if you yeah. did, people would shun you. Oh, yeah. The they would figure it out. Huh? Exactly. Uh, so, uh, you know, to, to think that this technology is all going to make us behave badly immediately is a terrible insult to your fellow man and woman. Uh, we'll figure it out. We'll understand. Hi, what's up? Hey. Hey. You want to say something cool? Yeah, sure. Is that a ukulele? Yep. Okay, here goes. 